Well, I gotta be honest with you, Mark. We've been beating the drum for the last year and a half, last two years, of you want to get Allen signed as early as possible, right? Yeah. Why do you want to get Allen, Allen signed as early as possible? Because other quarterbacks in that class are going to set the market. Right. Not only that, but the cap is often, it keeps rising. Mm -hmm. So the quarterbacks seem to just take a larger and larger chunk of money. They do. They're taking the same percentage, but it's, it's just more and more money, yes. right? So you want to lock in that rate early. I don't, I'm not, I'm not on that, I'm not riding that train this year. You're not championing nope. extending them now? No, I'm not, because cap's going down, but you're not going to get a discount on your quarterback. Like, no, you're, you're not. not getting a discount on it. So, if you sign him to an extension now, and you're going to spread money out, it's going to cost you more at the back end, right? Because you're just going to shave some off the next two years, and you're just going to push it to the back end. I don't know if I'm... I don't know if I'm there. You know, you got two more years of Allen under complete control, but there's no promise that this year and next year the cap goes anywhere. Cap might stay exactly where it is. Cap may go down. So why are you going to set yourself up for that liability of not being able to put a team around? Because you've already set that precedent with Dawkins and White extending them early. Different circumstance. That was pre-COVID. It was both pre-COVID. Okay. Well, Dawkins was in the midst of... When Dawkins wasn't on a five-year deal either. He wasn't, no. But you you said you could have had Trey White for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. For three years or something before they extended him. But you've already set that precedent in your locker room, pre-COVID or not. You've extended a first-round draft pick that you had. You've bought... Okay, both examples that you gave, Dawkins and Trey. I know where you're going with this. Okay. But the example I mean, of Trey... You need to talk. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> with Trey, we were talking about you could franchise tag. Yes. And it still happen, right? I'm taking that off the table, right? Franchise okay. tags are just it, are a poison well, at pill the to your time, cap right, right now. So let's give a, let's give a reference because reference, you said context is important. Mm -hmm. At the time, he had his fourth year his fifth-year option, mm -hmm. and then a franchise tag. So you had him for three at the time we had this right. discussion. Mm -hmm. But now you're discussing, like, trans translating that over to Allen. Mm -hmm. You're going to have the same thing, fourth year, fifth-year option, mm -hmm. franchise tag. So okay. you could, without doing anything, which we don't recommend, <laughs> without yeah. doing a thing, you have Allen for three years. At least. At least. You could double franchise tag him. We don't want a Kirk Cousins scenario. I agree with that, right? But you could feasibly be four years deep and just accept the consequences of that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. In both examples that you gave, Trey and Dawkins, they only bought out their last year. That was it. They bought out Dawkins last year. They bought Trey's fifth-year option out. Yes. We're entering Allen's fourth season. So you let Allen play through this contract. You don't extend him. You let Allen play through this contract, and then you buy out his fifth, buy out his fifth season. That's what you should do. Because your cap's not going anywhere, so why sacrifice the money now? Cap's going down. Yes. You're just going to be making Allen more expensive Yes. for no reason other than to make him more expensive. He's already on a contract. You're going to buy out his fifth-year option next offseason. Let him play through his contract now. I'm just saying I'm not an advocate of signing because I don't think you're saving enough money in year one to make it worth it. I just don't think you are. To be completely transparent, mm -hmm. we are – Purely talking about the business side of it. Solely money. Solely okay. money. It's all about money. We're not talking about, well, he's a franchise guy. You need him on this team. I agree. I'm not, yep. We're no, not talking fair. about that. That's we're fair. talking about from a financial yeah, standpoint fair. for the Buffalo Bills. It would be business-wise smart for them to let him play out his fourth year. Mm -hmm. And that, that does align with Trey. Mm -hmm. And then for his fifth year, you extend him. Right. Buy out his fifth year. And do, but... At that time, as a business, you'd still have to see, where are they? Mm -hmm. Where are they as a business? Did the cap go down again? Mm -hmm. Is this thing going is it going to rear its ugly head? One thing that's not convoluted, mm -hmm. and that all of Hashtag Nation should check out, is Mr. Rogers Home. Look at that silky segue. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're driving freezing. out here wondering if the 
roads are salted. It is 20 degrees out right now. I would love to be in the Valley of the Sun, not having to cut my grass, not having to redo my Sean, roof. Sean was just saying, he made a comment on a video the other day. He's like, you know, we could always cut some episodes by the pool. I was like, I'm not a shovel off my pool kind of guy. <laughs> like, that's not really where I am with life. I don't feel like <laughs> shoveling my pool off to get into it. <laughs> but yeah. that being said, um, I think it's a panic move by, see, when you say it, it sounds like a very, like, a, we have to get him. We have to get him. Now, if we had to transfer this back over to the field, we still don't know what life is like with Alan without David. And we're not going to find that out, apparently. No. So, we talked about his progression going from year two to year three. He made it. Right. Okay. He made that progression. Yep. Is there things that he still has to fix? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can he go from you know what, two, year two to year three was understanding the concepts of the offense and executing himself and making his own decisions. Now, it's I, I want more of the onus to be on Allen for year four mm -hmm. to make those decisions without David. Right. I, I wouldn't extend him either. It doesn't make financial sense to extend him. Both. I think that's a really unpopular opinion. I think we're going to catch some smoke on it. But that's again, fine. I. I, you look at your cap situation this year, and you say, why do I want to cost myself more money this year, right? You don't have to. I think Alan's perfectly happy knowing that his fifth-year option's picked up. He's going to be taken care of. Like, this this organization is not going to not take care of him. I think what's underplayed is the whole Trey deal, though. Like, Trey and Dawkins, the fact that they bought out their year. Mm -hmm. they're, yeah. Okay, this is the path that their first-round draft picks are going to be taken. However... A, sin, a scenario, two things. One, we can talk about how this relates to Watson. Mm -hmm. The other thing is this. When the Bills extended Trey, mm -hmm. they didn't have to worry about another first-round pick to extend. No. Tremaine Edmonds. Mm -hmm. That's another reason why you don't extend them early, because then Edmonds will be like, well, that's true. What's, where's mine? That's a good point. Where's mine now? That's a good point. I think it, it draws a line in the sand, right, as to where, I mean, everybody's aware that, that Allen's the franchise quarterback. Right? Yeah, absolutely. But you still have to make a commitment on some level. You, you still know? have your quarterback of the defense over there mm -hmm. playing three years in the league. He's 22, by the way. That is scary. I know, isn't it? He's isn't a three-year vet. Halsey, 22. Yeah. What? I still, I'm still, i baffled by that. Mm -hmm. Like That, that yeah. kid's been he's, he's been making strides. He got hurt, came back. And all, that's on the field. I want to talk about off the field. You're going to have to do that with him then. Do you have enough funds – in the tank to do that. No. This year, absolutely not. No, you don't. So you let absolutely. them play out their fourth years because you have money problems trying to re-sign and or get talent in the building mm -hmm. right now. Like, you don't have that talent in the building to go back to the AFC Championship. I'm sorry. You don't. Uh, so Josh Allen's contract, <laughs> his cap hit is for 2021 uh, $6.9 million. So for 2021, 6.9, and Tremaine Edmonds is making what? I'd be basically the exact same. There's no difference in quarterback to linebacker. There. Yes, there is. One was the top 10, sir. That's your point. Why do I keep making your points? <sighs> i got to look up Tremaine. That's oh, the there's a very significant difference between Josh Allen and Tremaine Edmonds. Uh, Edmonds is four. So Edmonds is making four million dollars on his twenty twenty one deal. Mm -hmm. If you extend him, you got to think Allen and Edmonds at least doubles. Yeah, I don't think there's any way you can get Allen below twelve. I don't think there's any way you can get Edmonds below eight. eight. Okay. So basically, what I'm saying is, as far as that goes, so. You think of the seven for Allen and the four for Tremaine. Let's just make it simple, even though it would be more. Right. Let's say you had to double their 2021 salaries mm -hmm. to extend them. Mm -hmm. That's $14 million. Mm -hmm. Or no, wait, seven and – what did I say? Seven and four. Seven. That's $11, yeah, 11 million. dollars. Okay. That's an extra $11 million that you don't have right now. Mm -hmm. Sure don't. Okay. What, yeah. that, is that the difference between re-signing a – Williams or Milano, mm -hmm. it doesn't make financial sense to extend them. Right. I agree. I agree. And that's why you look at Milano and Dawkins, and, or Milano and 
Daryl Williams and you look at the guys that you're going to resign and you say, listen, we got to, we kind of got a bargain shop this year yes. because you need that money for next year. Because if the, if the salary cap is exactly flat, right? Salary cap's flat. Allen and Ed- Edmonds are going to get a pay raise anyway. Yes. Like their fifth year options are going to be expensive because it's based off positional salary. Yes. So Edmonds is going to double. Allen's going to double. Like it's going to be, that's going to be where it's you are. Crazy. Right. It's going to be where you are. So you need to kind of roll some money into next year because you don't know if the cap's going to go up. You don't know if it's going to stay flat. Yep. If the cap stays flat, you're literally in the exact same boat next year as you are right now where you're like, well, we can't really afford to extend them. And that's dangerous. Yes. That's when it gets really dangerous. So you have to plan ahead for that. Right. So I think you got a bargain shop this year. I don't. I think last year was different circumstance, right? You bought, you brought in a bunch of veterans and you brought them in because there was no off season. So you had to pay for veterans. You had to get top guys at the position that you felt strongest about being able to come in and play snap one, right? And not have to acclimate to the NFL, not have to worry about teaching them a new system. You needed veterans who could come in and just do what they're told and perform and be a professional day one. And with rookies, you just don't get that. Right? You just, you don't. So they had to pay for that. That was the premium. That's the Vernon Butler premium. That's the Quinton Jefferson premium. That, Not really that's a Klein, but a Norman. Right. That, but that's what I mean. You paid a premium to those players because you needed them to be able to play day one. Yes. yes. And, you know, and with the rookies. And that we, wasn't just solely for the Bills. No. A, a lot, lot of teams. Yeah, a lot of teams said that, which is why the cap numbers for these players were higher than probably what they should have been. Yes. Yeah. But when it comes to Allen and Edmonds, I think you're right. You draw a line in the sand at some point. If you're going to resign one, what are you going to do with the other one? Yeah, I, unless you've already spoken to the other one and say, mm-hmm. "Listen, we're going to extend you," and you know, obviously, like you said, the quarterback position, mm-hmm. the strides. You know, I think from year from year one to year two, Edmonds had a greater growth. Mm-hmm. Year two to year three, right, was Allen. I think he had a greater growth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you take all that, in a, you know, all that intertwined. You add that to the fact that Trey was extended mm-hmm. in his after his fourth year. Right. And the precedent that was set, and the fact that you have two number ones, not just one number one to extend, with the salary cap not going anywhere. Right. All signs point to don't extend him early. Plus, you got another year to evaluate the kid. Mm-hmm. All right. I know Bills fans, you guys want Allen and Edmonds locked up now, but from a business standpoint, purely a business standpoint, it just doesn't make sense. Right.